Father, we thank you this morning and we bless you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you for we know you are still in church and you are. You created heaven and earth and has not given it to the hands of men. Not yet, and they will not get it. Therefore, Lord, in that confidence, in that faith, we exalt you. We thank you for all things, knowing that, Lord, you're in heaven and looking. There's nothing too hard for you to do. Lord, this morning, speak to us and minister your word to us. In Yeshua's name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank the Lord for his faithfulness. Thank him for his grace and thank him for the words of comfort and reassurance he's giving to everyone now that the world is so tense to what's going to happen, what's going. Um, during the week, I just looked at um, um, that was um, that Tuesday or Wednesday night, looked out of the window and then saw the moon still there still there standing still and as i was looking and gazing the lord just said to me this is still my world i own it i have not given it to men so when i looked up i said with all the things we're going through with the uncertainties with you know what has befallen the earth and with the confusion among men the Lord is still on the throne. So let's get comfort in that and glorify him. So this morning we'll be moving on to uh, a parable. We have not really, we've always um, included in the parable of the vineyard and then to talk about watchfulness. But a question came to me and says, please, can you explain who the porter is in Mark chapter 13 and verse 34. And because of that, we are going now to have an exposition of Mark chapter 13, 34 to 37. So let's pay attention and then take it all to ourselves. And then um, this question that is being asked. So if there's any other person who have these in mind and want to ask you know, or have been wondering or pondering what these means. Let's go. Mark chapter 13, verse 34 to 38. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for you know not when the master of the house cometh, at even or at midnight or at cock crowing or in the morning lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping and what I say unto you I say unto all watch the good thing about this teaching which the Lord has opened our eyes to is that those who have been listening had found out that we don't read the bible again on the surface we now take our time since the lord opened our eyes to see that most of the things written in the scriptures have not been touched has been hidden the reason being that we've gone the traditional way someone preaches a message and um, from the revelation god has given to them we take it on board and keep building on that without going back to see what other things did jesus say in that chapter or in that verse or in that passage so the digging um deep series and what jesus said and did the way the lord has taught us is to take away the blanket we've covered ourselves with and then look in and then see so from these verses we can see if you start earlier from verse 13 there was a parable on top of it but when we deal with it they will all come under the series of the parable of watchfulness but let's deal with this one because this question came today see for the son of man is as a man taking a far journey he had taken that far journey. He had gone into heaven. We've been waiting. We've been waiting since about AD um, um, 30 something or 40. Yet yeah, he had gone. We've been waiting. In the next few years now, we will be counting about 2,000 years. 
we've been waiting. Some people have said, even in the scriptures, even as early as he went, some says, oh, where is the coming of the Son of Man, which he had promised us, he has still not come. Even while he was here on earth, he gave a parable of the wicked servants who will see that the master delay it and start beating up. You see, he already told us there will be a waiting time. And in that waiting time is the time he will want us to plow with what he had given to us. So the Bible says he went to a far journey, far, even literally. <laughs> the Bible says, by searching can a man find gold. Even literally from earth to the mass, you can see how many millions of miles and how long it took the rover and the camera that was sent and were still collecting data. And yet there are many, many, many galaxies and the planets and, you know, bodies that are, according to scientists, how many times bigger than the earth? The earth is one of the smallest so far journey who left his house mm. who left the house who what is his house we're just going straight to look at these the bible says that our body is the temple of the living god is now the temple and jesus says for god will not dwell in the temple again built by man he was explaining to the samaritan woman and says no he's no more like that god is a spirit and they that worship him will worship him in spirit and the truth and when he looked up to the um temple at jerusalem he said to them that these will be taken down one after the other the scribes and pharisees didn't understand they were angry they said oh it took us many years to build how come you said that this will be taken down and in three days it will be built again they didn't understand that the house we're talking about now is no more the physical building is no more the physical state but the temple of the living god which you and i are he left his house and gave authority to his servants now let's take them one after the other so that we can understand he left and gave authority what authority luke chapter 9 verse 1 the bible says then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases he went gave us authority what authority did he give us acts chapter 1 verse 8 and you shall receive power after the holy ghost is come upon you hallelujah you know when you start looking into the scriptures and expositing them and you know digging the wisdom is i tell you out of this world that comes the eyes that open the bible says he's told he told them don't go anywhere and you shall receive power after the holy ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses of me in here in jerusalem in samaria in jerusalem in judea in samaria and on to the outermost part of the world that's the authority he gave them authority to go and preach the gospel right in our family in our neighborhood in our city in our states and then in our whole country and then intercontinental go and preach the word of god the authority to declare it the authority over powers devils and to cure diseases when he left he that's why he told them don't go anywhere I am going physically, but I will endure you with power on authority. Stay. Those who didn't stay didn't get it. And those who stayed got the power in Acts chapter 2. In same Luke 19, 17, he says, And he said unto them, Well, good servant, because thou had been faithful in very little, have thou authority over ten cities. The authority to rule. Amen. When he will come is how much we do with what he had given to us now we determine if we get this particular authority 
what other authority did he leave with us? Second Corinthians 10 verse 8. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord had given us for edification and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed. There's an authority to live a godly life. There's an authority to show for the life of Christ. Wow. The authority that Satan cannot annul, not, cannot defile, not, cannot even contend. The authority of righteousness, right standing with the Lord. Amen. That's why we're able to live a consistent Christian life because we've received that power over sin. Matthew 18, 18 and 19. The Bible says, Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that shall ask, it shall be done to, of that for them of my Father which is in heaven. Authority. Amen. Whatsoever we lose here on earth. What did the Bible say? He left, gave them authority. That whatsoever we lose shall be loosed in heaven. Whatsoever we bind shall be bound in heaven. Brethren, don't take your Christian light for a joke or for a light. It's a serious business. If you understand what the Lord had committed into our hands, you will watch. Amen. So, um, what's authority? Authority to be fearless. Second Timothy 1 7 for God had not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of sound mind sound mind do not be afraid do not be do, do not fear be calm and know that I am Lord the Lord in all situation it doesn't matter what we're seeing right now be calm for God is in heaven. Our beat is to trust him. Our beat is to commit our ways to his hands. Our beat is to remind him of his words and promises. Our beat is to know that it has not been given to man. The Bible says, for Egyptians are men, men and their horses are not spirits. Men will talk lofty words. They can exercise and do all sorts of wickedness, but the ultimate power still belongs to the Lord. What power? Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Authority. This is so comforting. This is what, you know, you know, gives us um, extra zest to move out in the morning. This brings strong confidence. I mean, hinged on the solid rock that it doesn't matter that faith is there. So in Acts chapter 4, 7 to 10, it says, And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what? power and by what name have you done these then peter filled with the holy ghost said unto them ye rulers of the you rulers of the people and elders of israel if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man by what means is he made whole be it known unto you all and to all the people of israel that by the name of jesus christ of nazareth whom ye crucified whom ye god raised from the dead even by him doth this man stand here before you whole Amen. I love that word. It says, be it known unto you. Wow. That's the power. That's the authority. If you have not known, be it known unto you today. Amen. That at the name of Yeshua Jesus, every nation will surely bow. There's no other name given unto men whereby we, we are saved. Is only that name. And that's why God gave that name above all powers and authority. That when we mention that name, every knee bow. That's the authority. Amen. Wow. 
I'm excited in my spirit, man, now. Pastor Kimi, thank you for asking these questions and bringing it out. It's a revival to my spirit, man. It brings back again the faith and the confidence that that's the name. Now, let's carry on in that. What did he say to them in, said to them, now, you in Mark chapter 13, for the son of man is as a man taking a far journey we've looked at that who left his house mm, you and i we are his temple and gave authority wow that we should exercise all this authority while he's away and to every man his walk every man his walk occupy till i come every man his walk second Timothy chapter 4 verse 5 be, but watch thou in all things in your affliction do the work of an evangelist make full proof of your ministry every man his work you have a work according to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 when we look at the gift of the Holy Spirit in Luke 19 13 he says every man his work occupy till I come 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 13 13 Paul said to the to Timothy till I come give attendance to reading to exaltation to doctrine Ephesians 4 8 wherefore he say it when he ascended up on, up on high he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men every man his work Every one of us have got something God has given to us. If you can sing, you can pray. If you cannot pray, you can visit. If you cannot visit, you can exalt. If you cannot exalt, you can follow up. If you cannot follow up, you can clean. If you cannot clean, you can cook. If you cannot cook, you can preach. If you cannot preach, you can have compassion. If you cannot have compassion, there's all of us has got one thing or the other. Religion had made it look like it's only those on the pulpit. No way. That's fallacy. That's deception of the devil. Everyone has got a gift. Bespoke. My brother, my sister, without you in the church, we are not complete. Not yet. Not at all. Because there's something in you that will make us complete. Look at us. They look at the five fingers. Without this one, if you like, cut it off. And you see how much this four can do in grabbing things. If you like, cut the thumbnail, the thumb off and see what it looks like. They are all of one body. Amen. So he gave gift to all. The Bible didn't say he gave to some and didn't give. He said to some he gave this, to some he gave this. Discover your gift. Know why the Lord has called you. Discover who you are and then walk in it. Don't desire another man's um, work or gift. Yeah, we know we live in a time where one gift is exalted above the others. Where if you don't preach and stand on the pulpit and do some theatrics, if you are not an orator and a great speaker, you are not given a gift. That's not true. If we take our time, First Corinthians 11, it says from 6, 4, 6, 11, you can read all through. It says now, for, number 4 says, now there are diversities of gift, but the same spirit. 6, and there are diversities of oppression, but it is the same God who worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man, hallelujah, to profit with all. And for one is given by the spirit of the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, the spirit is the same, to another the, the same spirit, faith, to another healing, to another walking up miracles, prophecies, designing up spirits, diverse kinds of tongues, interpretations of tongues, and but all these walk it in one self, same spirit. And verse 28. And again, first apostles, prophets, teachers, mi um, that uh, work miracles, and then healing, helps, government, diversities of tongues. And so also, if we go back to the book of Ephesians chapter 4, it's still there, brethren. Diversities of gifts. 
to everyone. I hope we discover ours. Apostle teaches a long, um, um, teaches um, um, a big, we have a big course on this school of ministry on discover, fulfill. Amen. And again, so what did he do? He said to them, walk and commanded the porter to watch. Mm. Commanded the porter. Who is the porter? There's a call for action here to everyone, to everybody, and to the porter. The porter is the watchman. The porter is the doorkeeper. The porter is the doorman. It says, watch everyone, every servant, including, including the porter, including the doorman, including the watchman. And who is the watchman? among us the bible made it clear to every one of us says look you watchman i've made you an overseer in the book of um, ezekiel let's go straight to look at some scriptures about those who the lord had called to watch yay and i open my bible to the book of um First Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 5 he says um, ye are all the children of the light and the children of the day we are not of the night nor of darkness therefore let us not sleep as those who sleep and then he carried on to tell in the book of Ezekiel look watchman I have made you a watchman if I tell the wicked to that he will die and you did not tell him when I come back I will require the blood from you who are the dull men the Lord said to the scribes and Pharisees in Matthew 23 13 but woe unto you scribes and Pharisees hypocrites for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men for ye neither go in yourselves neither suffer ye them that are entering into the porters the doormen, the men of God who stand in the watch, who stand in the watch, watching over the city, the intercessors, the prayer warriors who watch over the city. Are you really watching or do you stand at the door? You don't let people in and you don't let those who are in to go out. It can be the porter, the doorman, the watchman. God said, Jesus said to Peter, Lovest thou me more than this? Says, No, Lord, thou knowest. Says, Then feed my flock, feed my sheep, watch over them. And Paul said to Timothy, Be diligent to look after. Peter repeated it again, Be diligent to look after the flock committed into your hands. We should all watch have the lord put you in a place every servant including the porters including the ministers including those who stand at the door to let people in and let people out watch watch the flocks make sure they are taken care of make sure they've not backsliding make sure they've not slipped off make sure that they are still carrying on watch Get ready, for we do not know the time which they will come. Get ready in all things. Among us, as it said, get ready. Among everyone that he said, there's quite a lot. And therefore, he says to them, watch. In Acts chapter 26 verse 41, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. That the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Don't allow the weak flesh to overcome us. Watch. We have a message we have dealt on watchfulness and then just not repeating it. But therefore, there's quite a lot. First Corinthians 10, 11 says, what? Therefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he do what for watch watch and watch and watch amen jeremiah chapter 31 verses the watchmen watch 
what God has told us to do. I'm just reading the scriptures and then the Bible says there also for us to get ready. Get ready. And then in that getting ready, he says there, therefore, in Matthew 24, 44, therefore be also ready. For in such an hour they think not the Son of Man cometh, he will come. He will. Revelation 19, 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife had made herself ready. Let's be ready. Luke 12, 35 says, Let your loins be guarded about and your lights burning. And ye yourself likewise unto men that wait for their Lord. When he will return from the wedding, we have another parable of the wedding feast, which is quite very close to these. They are all called, three of them are the parable of watchfulness. We're going to look at the other two tomorrow morning. So brethren, watch, get ready for the time. You, the porter, who is standing at the door, letting people in and taking them out, preaching, intercessor, the preacher, whatsoever, watch. You, the servants of God, who go about serving the food to other people, making sure that every, you put in attendance, the servant is called the porter, watch. Watch yourself too. Don't get carried away. Don't be like the man in the book of Songs of Solomon who was busy doing other things, but his own vineyard he didn't look after. Watch. The time and hour with what is going on now, the righteous will not perish with the wicked, I tell you. The Lord will take them. The time we don't know. If you read from verse 32 of this same Mark, he was given the parable of the fig that when it's ripened, people will know that summer is coming near. We will look at that in the morning. Every sign, brethren, is out there. And the Lord is saying, as other servants are watching you, the porter, make sure you're so part of the watching. Because you can't be there letting people in and letting people out and you don't make it. If you, the typical are the touts in the parks. If you go to Africa, what do they tout do? They stand in the park, let people in into, oh, come on here. This is good. You see them all across the world and they say, oh, Lagos, 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 Lagos. And people are boarding and boarding and boarding. He let them in, put in their things, make sure everywhere and the vehicle moves down to Lagos. They are still where they are. Don't be like that. Make sure you move. Don't be in one place, letting people in and letting people out and you're still where you are. Look after yourself, take care. And he says, sleeping. When you sleep, you will still be awake. You will still wake. But during that time, you are still at, you are asleep. You will be unaware. You will be ignorant. You will be careless. You is a state, you know, spiritually is looked at um, a backsliding state taking things for granted, you are unaware of what is going on, you're ignorant when we're asleep. Some people wake up and say, oh, did you see what happened tonight? No, I was far asleep. You are unaware of your environment. We should be aware. We should get ready. We should be watchful. Don't be among those Christians who have taken a nap. Hey, he may come while you're napping. He may come while you are busy doing that thing you think is for now. Remember, this world will be rolled away like a scroll. It's not worth it, anyone getting anything in it to forfeit heaven. Don't sleep. Don't go into the world for a season, hoping that when you come back, it will be there. We will also look at the parable of the virgins, the wise and foolish virgins, all part of it. Brethren, watchfulness. Don't do other things. Don't forget that he's coming back again. It might be in the morning or at noon at night, even as we're preaching now, the trumpet may sound. What will we do? Brethren, get ready. While men slept, don't sleep. The enemy came sowing tears. And tears looks like the wheat. We studied that two, um, two weekends ago. It looks like the wheat. Don't please, brethren. Jesus is warning. He is talking. He is saying to everyone, everyone involved, whether you're the servants or the porter in the house, taking care 
and then watching over others, the overseer of the church, the pastors of the church, letting people in and getting them out. Make sure you put yourself in a position where you will still make it. Saying to the porter, watch. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you this morning. And we give you praise and we honor you. Help us, Lord, to take this very serious. It's sounding. The warning is going all over the whole place. We can't afford to sweep this under the carpet. We can't afford to remain sleeping. We need to wake up and arise, Lord. Help each and every one of us to understand that you have gone and you are coming back very soon. Time we do not know that we will be ready with what is going on around the world right now. We've seen the coronavirus and yet it's still not enough. People went back to sin again after all those fear and now another one is coming. Lord, there is every reason. There is everything. You've, you've every reason to believe you. You've done everything, Lord, to warn us. Help us to take this and not to neglect it. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I want